Uh, now, shortly after her appearance on Loose Women last year, Samantha Womack revealed that she had been diagnosed with breast cancer when a shadow was discovered during a routine checkup. Now, she chose to share her news after the passing of Dame Olivia Newton John, who sadly lost her life to the disease. That was last summer, and now uh, she is celebrating six months all clear. Please welcome Samantha Womack. <laughs> Everyone, uh, hi. welcome. Hi. Well, <laughs> well, firstly, thank goodness you're here. Thank you. Six months on. Yeah. Um, very scary, horrible time. It is. It's a roller coaster. Um, and you were actually on. You were in the line, the Witch of the Wardrobe at the time. Yeah. Am I, I was right working. that you were literally between a matinee and an evening performance when you went to have this checkup? Yeah. I don't. I've never been one to go to the doctors all the time. I just haven't been sick very often. And I don't know why. I think I believe now that you uh, you know your body on a kind of cellular level. Mm -hmm. It's not conscious thinking. Mm -hmm. So you, you're not aware that you're thinking that something is wrong. But interestingly, when you find something is wrong, you kind of know. So I had no signs. I didn't have a lump. I wasn't suffering with any symptoms. I went for a well woman check. And one of those checks was um, an ultrasound. So I just lay down, and the minute I saw the shadow, the radiographer just, you know, made that noise, and you think, well, yeah, he, 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 mm. because of the irregularity of the shape. If something's safe, it tends to be a natural shape, which is oval or circular. If it's gremlin-shaped, then you know it's, uh, it's out to get you. Was it... Did you have a mammogram before that? I didn't, no. No, so it was just on it the ultrasound. It was just the ultrasound, So yeah. did they... They gave you the diagnosis there and then? No, they can't do that, but what they can do is say, this looks worrying. Okay. And my dad was a GP, so I'm quite, mm. you know, kind of um, good with medical lingo. And so I said, be straight with me, is it the shape that you're worried about? And he said, yeah, it's an irregular shape, you should get it checked as soon as possible. And then it was just a whirlwind, it's a roller coaster. Well, A, you went back to work and went to the I stage. always go back to work, I just was like, it's this thing you yeah. do, right? Yeah. I find women, um, Mm. Incredibly moving, actually, when they're diagnosed. Mm. I, I found that throughout this whole journey, mm. is that, um, and obviously men as well, but there's just this incredible stoic um, quality of women mm. that just are always thinking of other people first. You're thinking mm. about your children, you're mm. thinking about your producers, you don't mm. want to let anyone down. Yeah. Um, and I think you get that thing as well of, well, there's nothing I can do about it right now, so I yeah. may as well go back to work. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it is the beauty of women in some ways. I mean, this, this, this whole journey for me has been mixed. It's been a mixed bag. I know you've, mm. obviously, your yeah, yeah. family has dealt with this, and there's beauty to be had in it, you know, because it's like seeing life in a very different way. You know, the, the, the lenses are removed, a bit like post-pandemic, you know, how we all experienced the mm. pandemic and everyone was so excited to get back mm -hmm. to normal. But everyone's left with a slightly altered vision. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone's kind of not quite sure why they're not having the best possible time. But mm. it's as if we've seen something else. And once yeah. you've seen it, you can't, can't unsee, unsee it. it. Yeah. And what, yeah. um, what was the treatment you had to have? So this is the interesting thing. So we come from a society, don't we, where you are diagnosed and you listen to the doctor and you do as you're told. But cancer is... Um, a very specific journey, it's very individual, and how you diagnose and how you treat is really complicated. And obviously the old style of um, medication was to kill everything. Um, and that's chemotherapy, and chemotherapy is wonderful when it's needed, it's fantastic at shrinking tumours. And But the, the danger is over-medicating, mm. and if you don't need chemotherapy, it can be a very dangerous mm. thing. Um, and so I was on the fence. I basically paid for a private test, which is when they take a tiny piece of the tumour, but they, at the moment they have to send it away to America. And it's like a six-week wait. It's very, very costly. Uh, the NHS will only do it in very small circumstances. But it gives you this amazing information about how you should be treated and whether you need chemotherapy. So I'm working with a company at the moment who's manufacturing that kind of the technological um, marker system, which basically means they can diagnose exactly the type of cancer you have and to avoid chemotherapy and this is if being, you don't need it. Yeah, this is being rolled out by the NHS Hospital Trust in Midlands, in the yep. Midlands, so it's yep. on a, a trial at the moment. The MHRA, it's yeah. approved, it's, it's all kind of up yeah. and running, it's being used, but it basically just tells you how and how your cancer behaves and whether you would need chemotherapy. And obviously, if you don't need it, 
there. And did you need it? I was on the fence, so it was a really good piece of information for me to get, but I had to wait for six weeks and it was, it was a lot of money. Mm. Um, and so I had two rounds of chemotherapy, which was very difficult. And then I decided with the information that I had that I would continue them with radio and, and stop. Because mm. um, it, it just, it didn't sit well with me. It was very scary. So you also talk about the language surrounding cancer. Yes. You know, you know whether you're stage this or stage that, yeah. and all of that kind of thing. Was that really difficult for you to manage and take on board and kind of diagnose yourself, you know, all those kind of thoughts that are going on? What, what, yeah. do, what have you found now in terms of the language and the use of language around cancer well, it's, with your experience. Uh, yeah it's such a learning curve i mean you're kind of you're uh, initiated very quickly into the language of cancer it, even simple things like grades and stage i didn't realize they were different but obviously the stage that you're at is how far it's traveled around your body but the grade is how aggressive the cells are so even just that simple thing can be mm. very confusing so you can do dr google which i was advised not to do mm. but you know you'll you'll be reading something about stage four a assuming that it's the same as what you have, which is grade four, but it's not the same. And yeah. you get very scary information back. So you have to become kind of self-taught. Mm. But you also have to push for your own treatment. You have to control it. It's very important to have a sense of control over a diagnosis like mm. this. I um, do think uh, women find it very, very confusing when you're given the diagnosis. Mm. Uh, a friend of mine has been treated for skin cancer mm. at the moment. He can't understand. They've got... You know, they took. They say you haven't got skin cancer, but you do have to have immunotherapy right. because that's the protocol now on the NHS. And I think there's so much confusion yeah. surrounding cancer treatments, which vary so much yeah. from hospital to hospital. And all the new medicines that are coming in as yes. well. And obviously everyone's time short. Most of the doctors and GPs that you yeah. see are all time short. I mean, that leads into mm. the pharmacy mm. um, diagnosis oh, listen, and medication. So we could talk all day, but you know, it's like we never have time yeah, to talk all day. I don't want to bore everyone. I know you're not talking about no, my cancer all the time. Never I apologise, but I no, am kind of never, no, say never say that. that. Yeah. Never say that, because absolutely no. not. And all that information helps if it helps yeah. just one yeah. person watching. It and, really does. And please check yourselves if you're younger as well, because I've just had a whole load of people saying, Please remind young people to check yeah, themselves too. Yeah, it's definitely. really, really important. Um, I just wanted to use the last 20 seconds that we have. Sorry? So, I just wanted to use the last few seconds to say that you are back at work. You're going to 42nd Street. I am. I'm going to go um, back to work 18. in five weeks. I start rehearsing. Yeah, which is amazing. Um, UK tour begins on the 13th of July. So, what a wonderful thing to go back mm. to. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm very lucky. Um, I wish we you could talk more, Samantha. Come well. back another time. Tell us about the show. And I, will, I will. I will. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you.